Components added to SOLIDWORKS assemblies can initially move freely within the assembly's environment. It's often useful to move components within the assembly to help with adding mate relationships or to demonstrate movements of parts within the model. There are several tools available to assist you in moving and rotating components. In this lesson, you'll learn about commands and mouse button functions available, and also how to use the triad tool to reposition components in the assembly. You'll also learn about some options available in the Move Component tool that can help you detect collisions within parts of the assembly. This allows you to test moving mechanisms in your assembly and output data such as minimum clearance distances. If you plan on doing the SOLIDWORKS associate exam, it is worth learning this tool because there will be questions that ask you to use the Move Component tool to check for collision detection, and then providing an answer from the data you get of the minimum clearance distance. Not only is it good for the exam, but also in a practical real world example is when you have assemblies with a lot of moving components, you can check to see if anything is going to collide and cause an issue. If you want to follow along with this video, you can find a link to all the assembly and part files in the description of this video. Please be aware that I'm now using SOLIDWORKS 2020 edition, so you will need 2020 or newer to be able to open and use these files. So let's begin the lesson. There are several techniques to move and rotate an underdefined component within the assembly environment. A component whose position is underdefined will appear with a minus sign in the feature manager tree. This indicates the component has some freedom of movement within the assembly model. The most direct way to manipulate a component position is with the mouse buttons. Dragging it with the left mouse button will move it around, while right-clicking on it and holding will rotate the component. Another tool is the triad, which can be accessed by right-clicking on the component and going to Move with Triad. The triad consists of three axes, the XYZ, the planes, and the rotational axes. The XYZ directions will allow the component to move in that one direction. The planes will allow the component to move in a 2D component, so here we have the X and Y plane that we're moving along. And the rings will allow it to just rotate in that particular direction, so either XY, ZY, or ZX. To access additional selection and movement properties of the triad tool, you can right click on it. But I find there's a bit of a trick. If you just right click on the triad, you'll find it disappears. So you can click away, right click on it again, go back to move with triad. Now I find if you click on a direction and then click on it again, and then right click, you'll have this additional triad menu. So again, right click on the component, go to move with triad, and this time I might select the plane, click once, click again, and then right click, and you should see this menu. If you don't see it, just try clicking once, so go to move with triad, and just right click anywhere on the triad. So in my situation, it doesn't seem to work that way, I have to actually double click on one of those parts, and then right click. This menu allows you to specify values for the movement, the Translate XYZ box allows you to specify a coordinate location for the component. The Translate Delta XYZ can be used to define exactly how far from the current position you want to move. There is also an option to enter angle values for the rotation. By default, the triad is aligned with the axis of the assembly coordinate but other geometry can be used to modify its alignment and position. You can drag the origin of the triad to move it to a new position and then make your component adjustments from that position, or pick from options in the right-click menu, like Move to Selection and Align with Selection. Align with Selection will realign the triad axis, whereas Move to Selection will realign the triad to the geometry picked and also move the triad. If you right click on the origin of the triad, you can also choose to align to the component's origin or the assembly's origin. Clicking on the screen away from the triad will clear it from view and it will always return back to the default position when accessed again. For even more options on repositioning components, the Move Rotate Component tool can be used. This tool can be accessed in a few ways. One is going up to the Tools menu and then Component. And here it is actually divided into two tools, but they are the same tool. It'll just access directly to the either rotate or move component. You can also right click 
on a component and then expand the menu by clicking on the double arrow down the bottom and then going to move component or in the command manager when working in the assembly environment you'll see the move component tool the toolbar lists the tool in two different ways, move component, and if you click on it, rotate component, but in reality, they are the same tool. To activate the move rotate command, simply click on it. And if you wanted to switch to the rotate tool, you simply click on the rotate group box here, or you can go back to the move by clicking on the move group box. So you can switch between the two tools by using these two group boxes here. With our Move Component tool activated, you'll notice this drop down here. Dropping this down will give us some additional options, and these options will allow us to define specifically how we want to change the position of the part. Also included in these options is ways of having our components in the assembly interact with each other. Collision detection will identify when components collide and has the option to stop at the collision point. So if I have this option enabled and I drag the part, as soon as they touch, they're going to stop. The option for physical dynamics allows one component to push another. So as I drag this part across and it touches, it's going to actually interact and move it out of the way. The other option for dynamic clearance can also be turned on to identify the clearance between the components while moving. Most of the advanced options relate to the behavior for collision detection and physical dynamics if needed. But another important option to be aware of is this configuration checkbox. If multiple configurations exist within the assembly, moving components will affect all configurations by default unless you have this option checked. If the option is checked, then it will only affect the configuration you currently have active. Now let's move into part two of this lesson and go into a bit more detail on the information you can get from the move component tool. When working with an assembly that has moving parts, it is often important to know if parts will interfere with each other while in motion. The move component command includes options to detect collision to help identify if, when, and where collisions between components occur. To use these additional tools, let's go back to the move component tool and click on it to activate it. Then in the property manager, turn on collision detection. In the options, you can also select all components for collision detection, or you can select specific components. Selecting specific components limits the scope of the evaluation, but it can help with the computer performance when dealing with large assemblies. To select components, click on these components, and then in the options box, make sure it is activated by clicking on it, and then just click on the components that you wish to use the collision detection on. Once you have finished selecting the components you wish to use, just click on resume drag to continue using the move tool. You can also limit the scope of detection by clicking dragged part only, which will mean that collision will only happen on the part you are actually moving or dragging or rotating. If you enable the stop at collision option, SolidWorks will stop the parts moving whenever they collide with each other. If this is not enabled, then it will just rotate freely. And if we re-enable this, which is what we kind of want anyway, as soon as we start moving the component again, it's going to stop at where those parts collide. Under the advanced options, there are more options to assist with easily identifying the area where components collide. The default selections are to highlight the component faces and play a sound when a collision takes place. The option to ignore complex surfaces can be enabled to check only for collisions between planar, cylindrical, conical, spherical, and toroidal surfaces. Once the options have been set to our needs, you can use the left mouse to click and drag the components of the assembly. And this way we can clearly identify where our collisions are taking place. In this assembly, we can see our two couplings are interfering and causing a collision. So let's make some modifications to these parts so that we can have a more freely moving component. First, we're going to click OK to close the move component tool. We'll begin by editing the bottom coupling. So clicking on that and going to edit part. This way we can edit the part directly in the assembly. And we're going to add a chamfer to these internal edges. So by going to chamfer, either by using a quick menu S on the keyboard to access, or if you can't find it, go to the features, fill it, drop that down, go to chamfer. We're going to use a two mil chamfer and just select this in internal edge and this internal edge. You should see a preview appear. Clicking OK. So we now have a chamfer edge on that one. We can edit, we can exit that part, sorry. 
and then editing the top coupling by again clicking on it, go to edit part, go back to our chamfer tool, making sure two mil is selected again and selecting those internal edges and clicking OK. And then exit the edit part and we should be able to freely move our component now. So to verify these parts no longer interfere, we need to again go back to the move component tool and use collision detection. So we can activate our move component, turn on collision detection. We're going to go to these components and then pick our two coupling components, stop at collision and then resume drag. So if we rotate this, we should find there is no longer any collision. Now that we have a working model, we may want to know the clearance between these two edges. And the dynamic clearance checkbox allows you to do this. So first we click on dynamic clearance. Like we had to select our components before, we again need to select our two components for the dynamic clearance. So we can click on this box. We want the two couplings again and go to resume drag. With the dynamic clearance option enabled, as we click and drag, you can see in the graphics area our minimum clearance. And also in our options, there is a numerical value. Once our part has done a full rotation, and that way it can detect what the minimum clearance is, we can see this is, in our case, 0.54 millimeters, is the minimum point of clearance. An additional option we can use is to define a clearance value for which we want the components to stop. So we can do this by clicking on stop at specified clearance. We can see our minimum is 0.54 in a full rotation. So let's make this one millimeter. And then if we drag it, it's going to stop at that point where it is one millimeter. If we were to try that again at say 1.1 millimeters and just pushing tab to sort of move on from that option and then dragging, it's now going to stop at 1.1. If you have an option where you might say one millimeter, go to drag it, you may get a, an error dialog come up. Just click over okay to that. It just may mean that where it's positioned currently, it's too hard for it to detect a collision. So you might just need to move it back to a larger area and then change your clearance and then try moving it again. So that completes this lesson. It's an important tool to learn because if you are doing the exam, the SOLIDWORKS associate exam, you will need to use this tool to detect a clearance of an assembly and then making sure you can find the minimum clearance value and inputting that as your answer. And it's done in a few sections of that exam and possibly the professional exam as well. So that's the end of this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we'll move on to the next lesson.